So this series of videos is for you, my free-to-play fans out there. Wabi Gaming is going free-to-play for the next four weeks, possibly 12. So join me on this journey. I'm going to show you some real tips and tricks that you can do as a free-to-play player, starting with the race that's coming up. Welcome to Wabi Gaming, the place where gamers grow. If you would like to see more free-to-play videos and how to get the most bang for buck for your gems, make sure to subscribe. Number seven is to decide any monsters where you want to unlock runes or you want to change runes because you want to take those X runes off and put them onto other monsters. So I'm going to take you through my process. I actually did it just before now, but I forgot to hit the record button. So this is going to be an easier, shorter version. So what you can see here is what I've done is in Placid Fury, we have a list of all the monsters, our best monsters in each category for each book. So Denier, Attacker and Support. And what I do is I go to my monsters. So you can see I've already started going through my list and I'll go through it again just so you can see a couple of examples. So you can see Corfor, I removed those runes for him in the past just because he's not on my list. So you can see if I do a search for Corfor, he's there once. But in this, I have Kadama at rank 5 and I have Daedalus at rank 4. So I just don't need to use Core 4 anymore. So that's why he's sitting on 7 runes. The next example is Lonraf. I do like Lonraf because he has resurrection skills and he is a monster that I will be ranking to R5. So I'm going to keep the X runes on Lonraf. Andana. So you can see Andana. Let's check Andana out. We can see that we have Andana twice. And we haven't done it in Adventurers, and we haven't done it in Female as well. So I would always use Tabora and Heinrich over Andana. But what I do like about Andana is she has a really good skill set, and she has the positive effect removal with an extra turn, and then can trait disable. So sometimes she does come in more useful than Tabora and Heinrich. So she is one of the mythics that I might rank to R5. So because of that, I'm going to keep the extra runes on Andana for now. Next one here is Siberial. So let's do a search for Siberial. So you can see I have Siberia once only in Evil Legions, and I will always use Lindworm or Shelly over Siberia. And typically, I might want to use Siberia as an attacker in metal, but I have Vanos, so I'm always getting a rank 3 Vanos over a rank 4 Siberia. So Siberia is going to be one of the monsters I'm going to take runes off. She served me really well, but her time has come to an end. Mizurus, I have Mizurus once as a rank 4 in Dark, and... Initially, I put her on the list, but I'm going to take her off just because she has a specific skill set, Resurrection, which other monsters don't have. So sometimes I do want to use the positive effect removal or the Resurrection or the boost damage from Mizuris. So Mizuris can still be quite handy in Teemo, so I'm actually going to keep them on for now. Simus is one that I was going to take off initially as well, but I'm going to cancel that and I'm going to keep my experience on Simus because Simus does come in quite handy. Let's see who we had. So I don't have Simus as my best monster for any of my books, but Simus is one of the mythics that is probably rank 5 worthy. So eventually over time, I will probably rank 5 her. And so because she is still quite useful, I'm going to keep the X runes on her for now. So Daedalus, I consider removing, but he's sort of like another specialist monster where he has the Mega Taunt. So I'm going to keep him for now. Nor is similar. Sometimes I want that extra turn up for Nor. We'll do a quick search for Nor. And you can see I have to bore it in female. And my superheroes is quite weak though. I have Moon Haze, Nor, or Solar Flare. So because my superheroes is quite weak, I'm gonna keep Nor for now. Heist. So Heist, you can see we have Underworld. I'm always gonna use the Bora over Heist in Underworld. And in Fire, we have Ignis. So I'm always gonna use Ignis over Heist. And Heist at 130 isn't very useful for me, so I am going to remove it off Heist. Unspeakable, you can see I don't have Unspeakable on my list at all. So that's why Unspeakable is on my list to remove. Undead Mr. Beast, you can see he's got rank 132. And because I never intended to rank him higher than that, even though he has a pretty good skill set, I put 7 runes on him already. Because I didn't want to be in a situation where in say 1 month, 2 months time, I'm not going to use him. So because I know I'm not going to rank him up high, I've only put 7s on so I don't waste my gems taking them off later on. Hardy, I'm going to keep the 10s on Hardy because he does have a special skill set in that he has Anticipation and we still don't have that many Anticipation monsters. So I'm going to keep 10s on Hardy for now. Erda. Erda is an interesting one. So you can see I have Erda for Good Legions and my Good Legions isn't that strong. I've got Synapticus, Stygale or Erda. 
and none of those are super strong and because I don't have Daiga ranked up. And in Thunder, I do have some good Thunder options. Heinrich and Iguanazor are both very good options. So I am going to keep them on Urda for now, mainly because of good legions and I'm weak in that book. Glamhead. So you can see I don't have Glamhead as my best monster for any book, so that's why he's on my list. Rotten I consider removing, but because he has Resurrection, and sometimes he does become a little bit useful in Gauntlet just to remove stamina, so I'm going to keep them on Rotten for now. Moonhaze. So Moonhaze, again, superheroes. I'm weak in superheroes, so that's why Moonhaze is keeping her runes. And then we start going into the legendaries. Falasa is really good in PvP attack and in wars, so she hits hers. Grakon still sometimes comes in useful. Pyro, Nadia the Pyromancer is in my NSD team, so we're keeping that. Samuel is also in the NSD team, so we're keeping that. And Wormlad, we're going to keep that for now because sometimes he does get used in wars. And the only Cosmic Mythic that doesn't have three rune slots is... Renata, so I'm going to unlock that third rune slot for Renata. And then we start going into a whole bunch of other monsters. Man of Fusion, I think I do want to rank up Man of Fusion to rank 5, so she's going to keep those runes. And there's a Centurion at 105 somewhere. So he's got 10 runes as well, and we're going to keep his runes, because he does come in useful for certain restrictions, just because he has a specific skill set with Mega Taunt and the positive effect protection. So he does come in useful at times. So there you go. That's my list of monsters that I'm going to take runes off and unlock. So that's going to give me an extra 12, 10 runes, which is pretty useful. Now, the other thing you want to be careful of as a free-to-play player especially is the level of runes that you decide to put onto your monsters. So what I recommend is put placeholders level 1, 2, and 3 for all new monsters because those only cost gold to remove. So if you look at my legendaries and we scroll down a bit further, you'll see all of my legendaries have level 3 runes and they're all team gold. There are a couple here and there that have 5 runes and I kind of regret that. I wish I had kept 3 runes on those and saved those 5 runes. And the reason why you want to keep 3 runes on these is because it only costs gold to extract. It doesn't cost any gems. And you will notice on the monsters that I use a lot, they either have 10s or 7s. That's the only options that I put. And the reason why you want to do that is... Once you go above level 3 runes, they are always going to cost gems to extract. So because they are going to cost gems to extract and you want to get the most bang for buck for your gems that you use, what you want to do is decide, hey, what level runes can you get a lot of? For me, because I have put the rune packs and I have done a lot of Grandmaster Duels in the past, then I was stacked up on 7s and I was stacked up on 10s. So for me, it made the most sense to put either 10s or 7s onto my monsters. For you, it might be a little bit different. It might be like fives and sevens that you can put on all your monsters. So my encouragement for you is to decide, hey, what two or possibly three levels of runes can I put on all my monsters and put only those runes on those monsters so that you can skip the ones that aren't necessary. What this will do is it makes it easier for you to gamble up and down. And it also means when it comes to things like Gauntlet or Team Wars or PvP, it's much easier for you to swap your runes around because you don't have to sort of look for, hey, where are my 8s, where are my 6s? You can say, I either have 7s and I'm going to mix and match, or I have 10s and I'm going to mix and match. So it makes it a lot easier to switch your runes around as well. So looking at my mythics, the mythics that I use a lot, they all have 10 runes, and the mythics that I use from time to time, they're all sitting on 7 runes. If you would like to see more free-to-play videos and how to get the most bang for buck for your gems, make sure to subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.